I think a treat to target strategy is needed for Bechet syndrome. We plan the treatment of patients with Bechet syndrome according to the types of organs that are involved. Patients who have only skin and mucosa uh, involvement are treated differently than patients who have major organ involvement. In patients with major organ involvement, we always use immune suppressives or biologic agents in addition to glucocorticoids. And when planning our treatment for Bechet syndrome patients, I think we need to define treatment targets, attainment of which would predict good long-term results and treat our patients accordingly in order to um, reach these targets. And if these targets are not reached, we need to step, our, to step up our treatment modalities. TNF inhibitors have been the most commonly used biologic agent for the management of Bechet syndrome. A randomized controlled trial had shown that they are effective for oral ulcers, nodular lesions, and popular postular lesions. And several open-label observational studies have shown that TNF inhibitors work well for uveitis, for vascular involvement, for nervous system involvement, and for gastrointestinal involvement of Bechet syndrome. Overall, around two-thirds of the patients have a good response. However, um, sometimes infections, especially tuberculosis, may limit our use of TNF inhibitors in patients with Bechet syndrome. Aprilast have been approved for the treatment of oral ulcers and genital ulcers in patients with Bechet syndrome. Uh, first, the phase two trial followed by a phase three trial have shown that both the number of oral ulcers, the pain of oral ulcers, as well as overall disease activity and quality of life improved in patients with Bechet syndrome compared to placebo. Um, later, when we, uh, when we put together the number of patients who had genital ulcers in the phase two and phase three trials, we saw that also there was a significantly more complete remission rate for genital ulcers in patients with Bechet syndrome who were treated with Aprimlas compared to placebo. Also, the number of new worsening uh, skin lesions were, were less in patients who received Aprimlas compared to placebo. Um, and also there was important improvement in quality of life in these patients, especially in the physical function component of SF36. Um, coming to adverse events, um, Aprimlas is generally safe compared to immune suppressives that would be used in patients with refractory mucocutaneous involvement. Um, however, gastrointestinal adverse events could limit their use. Some patients had to decrease the dose or sometimes even discontinue Aprimlas due to gastrointestinal adverse events such as vomiting, nausea and diarrhea.